Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, this one bar of 5G. This <laughs> piece of <laughs> all the time it says I've got one bar of 5G and it never <laughs> this hot spotting thing, it's such a piece of <laughs> Yes, to solve that annoying problem, we have now bought the Starlink mini dish. And this thing is amazing. I've been testing it for the last couple of weeks now. It is like the size of an A4 piece of paper and it is so compact. This Starlink dish now has the modem inside the dish so you don't need to carry an additional modem. It can be run from 240 volts and also 12 volts, but it's not as simple as that. I'll get into that a little bit later, but I am gonna be running it off a DC voltage rather than AC socket using the inverter. So because this is so nice, nimble and small, I'm going to permanently mount it to the roof of the van, but I'm also gonna mount it in a way that I can take it off super easy, unclip it, and then move it to a location in the event that we're parked under a tree and it's blocking the signal from the satellites. Now there are gonna be some downsides to permanently mounting, like you're not gonna get the absolute optimum position that it needs to connect to all the satellites. But after testing it for the last couple of weeks, flat mounting it works perfectly. We've just had it on the dashboard and you do get a very, very strong signal. But I'll go into details later if you're interested, the difference between mounting it flat and then also aligning it perfectly the way that the app wants you to. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna mount it, which mounting system I'm gonna use, and then how I'm wiring the whole thing into my van. So this is the 3D printed Starlink mount that I bought. I wanted a simple mount that I could customize myself. The mount is printed in four pieces, so I had to put it together first with some super glue. I bought this specific mount because it is customizable for what I want to do, but it was also the cheapest mount I could find on eBay, so I'll leave a link to where I found it. So I've glued my 3D printed frame all together now, it's super rock solid. And now I'm gonna figure out how I can actually mount my Starlink dish in so it stays solid. The guy that sells these 3D printed mounts recommends you just double-sided tape these things in, but because I wanna have my Starlink dish removable so I can quickly remove the dish from the roof in case we are parked under a tree or something and I wanna relocate it with the 15 meter cable to a better spot. I wanna have a quick way of taking the Starlink dish out, but also keep it secure while we drive, especially you know down the highway going 100 kilometers an hour. So the way that I've come up with this, and this is actually a hollow 3D print, so there's not much structure integrity in the frame itself, but I'm gonna drill a hole through one of the corners and out the bottom, and then I'm gonna use this stainless steel bolt, and you can see it's actually got a little square edge on the end of it. So I'm gonna feed it up through this side, and I'm gonna use a little square file and file out a square hole. So when I put this in, it's not gonna spin. And then on top, I'm gonna to put a stainless steel washer and then a wing nut and screw it down. So then when I wanna take the Starlink dish out, all I have to do is take a wing nut out from this side and then I'll be able to easily lift the Starlink dish out and put it anywhere else I want around the van. Okay, so I changed my plan a little bit. I ended up putting four bolts, one on each corner, and now I've got the proper stainless steel wing nut and stainless steel washer. And I've also got a split washer underneath that so it stays nice and tight. I've glued in these little dome bolts so they aren't going anywhere. So I can flat mount this now. And when I wanna take it out, all I have to do is just remove these two and the whole thing kind of slips out. So I might also put a little tab on the end of this one so I can actually grab it when it's flat mounted because it is flush and I've got nothing to grab onto. Let's go mount this and install the cable through the roof. Okay, so this is where the Starlink is going to be permanently mounted and I'm just gonna drill it straight into my wooden deck with these little mounting holes that this 3D print comes with. And then, like I said, if I wanna take it off, I just undo two of these wing nuts, the whole thing pops out. So what I wanna do now is just test the speed difference between 
flat mounting this and then aligning it in the orientation and direction that the app wants you to, just to show you the difference between what a flat mounting and a perfect alignment is. And like I say, it's actually not much. Okay, so I'm going into the app and I'm gonna do a speed test with it flat mounted like this. So I'm going into speed test. Okay, it's doing a download test. It's around about 150 megabits per second, which is still insanely quick. And now it's gonna run an upload test. Okay, so it's finished at 150 megabits per second download and 12.5 megabits per second upload with a latency of 25 milliseconds. So that is insanely quick, really good results. So now I'm gonna go and align the Starlink so you open up the app and it tells you exactly how to align it. Okay. okay, so now that I've got it aligned, I've had to prop it up with a couple of bits and pieces. I'll do another speed test. Run speed test. Okay, so it did 195 megabits per second download and 16.8 megabits per second upload with a latency of 38 milliseconds. I mean, they are very comparable. I don't know if you ever would need the difference between 150 and 200 megabits per second. They're still insanely fast. So flat mounting is gonna be perfect for us. We're never gonna need such high speeds. Okay, so I'm gonna mount this to the deck now and then I'm gonna run the cable down the van wall here with a cable entry gland to make it all watertight. So as with anything exterior, you need to remember you stand still fasteners, otherwise they will just rust. Okay, so that is not going anywhere. That is rock solid. And I put this little foam tape on there just to give it a bit of cushioning when it all screws down so it makes it nice and tight when these washers hold it down. All right, so let's run the cable. So the way that I'm gonna wire this one up is with the original Starlink cable, but it comes with 15 meters of cable, which I obviously don't need. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut it. And I do wanna use the original Starlink cable as the plug comes with this little weatherproof washer which will stop any water entering the dish as that's how it's been designed so i only need about two meters of this i've measured it out already so i'm going to cut that right the rest of it is what i'm going to use later on and i'm going to explain how i'm going to use that so now we've got this two meter long piece and it's going to enter the van with what's called a cable entry gland so basically my cable is going to enter through here and then I'm gonna drill a hole in the van and I'm going to use a rubber grommet. So this is a little rubber grommet that will fit over the top of the cable, which basically will stop the cable getting cut by the sharp sheet metal of the van. So all I have to do is drill a six mil hole to the top of the van here. I put a bit of rust protection paint, add the rubber grommet, and then I'll be able to feed my cable through. Then all I have to do is just glue this cable entry gland down and seal it up. And basically that just stops any water getting anywhere near the hole in the roof. And it's also aerodynamically designed. So when you're driving, obviously the wind's gonna go this way and the cables at the back here. I'm prepping the area with a bit of masking tape. So when I do put the Sikaflex glue down, it doesn't go everywhere. And I can take the tape off before the glue dries for a nice clean finish. Hey, I've installed the Starlink dish on the roof now and I've wired it up into my cable entry gland down here. And what I did was I just used a bit of Sikaflex to glue this down. Don't need to screw it. This thing is so lightweight. It doesn't need that extra support. The Sikaflex will hold it down sufficiently. And then I've just cable tied the cable for the Starlink around here. And then it goes into this little housing. There's a little port here that is 3D printed. So to remove the Starlink, it's just these two wing nuts, pull the tab, lift it up there's some slack i take out the cord and then i made this little place where i can store the cord so it doesn't go flying around in the wind if i ever drive off 
Okay, that was pretty easy, but it is super hot day today and I am sweating. So I'm gonna go into the van and make a little iced coffee. All right, if you've been following us for a while, you know that we love coffees, especially espresso type coffees. Over the last couple of months, we've been using a totally new product. It's called the Out-In Portable Coffee Machine. And this thing is absolutely awesome. We've used it on planes, on trains, buses, at the beach, anywhere you can think of and you want an espresso. Because the greatest thing about this is it actually heats the water up for you inside the machine. Doing it that way, you get about four coffees or you could heat water up in the kettle like I'm gonna do right now, and you can make about 200 coffees. And the best thing about this coffee machine is that it is completely automatic. There's a water pump in here that extracts your coffee. So I'm gonna make a coffee with one of these Nespresso capsules, but you can also make a coffee with ground coffee with this porta filter, which it also comes with. If you're interested in getting one of these, I'll leave a link in the description where you can click on and get 10% off. So I've run my Starlink cable down into this cupboard through here and now the tail that I cut ends up into this cupboard. And my goal is that I'm gonna have a little switch here so I'm gonna be able to just turn the Starlink on and off as I please. So the Starlink will technically run off a 12 volt battery but there is a little bit of a caveat. So if I was to connect this tail directly to my lithium battery which sits at around about 13.5 to 13.7 volts, the Starlink should operate. However, because most of the cable I ran around this van is this two millimeter square twin core cable, by the time the power reaches up here, it's actually got a little bit of voltage drop. So it's seeing around 12.8 volts, meaning that the Starlink does struggle to operate. So the way around that, and what most people are doing with these Starlink units are installing a step up. So this converts the 12 volt into 24 volts at five amps. So it's super easy to install. All you do is run 12 volt in, and then you get 24 volt out. And this will connect directly to my Starlink, but I'm going to actually switch the 12 volt side. So I'll show you all how it works. So to make it a little easy for you to understand what I'm doing, I've set up a diagram explaining essentially the three ways you could wire in your Starlink unit in your van. First way is what I'm doing is hard wiring DC. So I've got my 12 volt power that's coming in. That's going to my switch with the indicator light. Then that goes into my DC converter, which converts the 12 volt into 24 volt. And that goes into the original Starlink plug that I've cut. The other way you can do is with the original power supply supplier running the original cable through an inverter. And then lastly, you can run it through a high powered USB port with a minimum of about 60 watts. So this is different to a low powered USB port, which would charge your phone. And then you need to use a cable with a USB-C port on one end and a 4.5 millimeter jack or the Starlink jack on the other end. And you can buy these all online. I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can download this diagram for free. And it's got links to all the products where you can get them from. So I'm gonna put a little switch in and this has got a little indicator light. So I'll be able to tell if I've left the Starlink on or off. I'm gonna install it right here. So that means I can just switch on and off the Starlink from this little spot. So if you are doing something like this, it's worth noting that the Starlink cable is a little bit different to your normal double strand cable in the fact that there is a positive center and then a sheathing around it, which is actually the negative. So when you wire it up, you just be aware that the center one is actually the positive. So I'm gonna be using these crimp quick connectors to connect all the cables up. And then I'm gonna cover some of the exposed connections with heat shrink just to stop any chance of it shorting out. Have you ever dreamt of building your own camper van but just don't know where to start? Let's change that. Van Build Academy is the ultimate online course designed to take you from where do I even start to look at my awesome home on wheels. With easy to follow step-by-step -step video tutorials, expert guidance, and a community of builders, you'll learn everything from electrical, plumbing, insulation, design layouts, and so much more. Your dream van isn't gonna build itself, but I'll show you exactly how to do it. Join Van Build Academy today and learn how to build a van just like this. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can find out more information. Okay, so I've just wired this all in rough before I go and tidy it all up and secure all the connections. I just wanted to test if it works. So if I click this button, the light should come on and I should start getting a Starlink signal. Okay, light comes on. That means we've got power. So 
let's have a look. There we go, my Salty Van Ventures Wi-Fi signal. So now if I open the Starlink app, it's connecting, searching for satellites, there we go. We are online and if we check our statistics, we have a 25 watt power draw and let's just do a little speed test. All right, the speed is looking good. So I'm gonna tidy this up and then I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with the rest of the Starlink cable that I cut off. Okay, so this is how the final wiring looks now. I've got the converter screwed into the back of this wall here. All the wires are securely held to the board with these little clips. And then I've used heat shrink on the terminals to stop them from shorting out. So what am I gonna do with this now 13 odd length of Starlink cable? Now I'm going to utilize this for when I want to take the Starlink dish off the roof and run it around the van, giving me that 13 meter diameter in case we park under a tree or something. So I had a couple of ideas of how I thought I was going to do this. You can actually buy online a DC plug to USB plug for the Starlink. And that's generally used with one of these really high wattage cigarette lighter plugs. So this one here has actually got 100 watts and I use it for charging my laptop. And it would also work for powering the Starlink. I originally thought I could just make one of my own by using a donor USB-C port and utilizing the negative and positive ports of that plug. However, since then I found that it's actually not how it works. These USB-C plugs are a lot more sophisticated than the old USB-A. They do have little microchips inside this little bit, which does dictate how much power it sends to the unit. So I trialed a couple of cables and couldn't get it to work. I don't really need to go all 12 volts. In the odd occasion that we are gonna park under a tree, I'm just going to utilize the original power adapter that came with the unit and because I need the waterproof plug on the Starlink itself I don't specifically need a waterproof plug on this so I found a donor 4.5 millimeter DC plug which I'm just going to solder on to this cable and then I'm going to have a 13 meter cable that I can run around the van I'm just going to plug it into the wall here and I'll be able to put it out the window. I've got my inverter on now. If I plug this into here and turn it on, I should be getting 30 volts out of here now. Look at that, pretty close to 30 volts. Okay, so this works perfectly now. I've salvaged this cable and I mean, I could have just bought a new one, but I may as well use the stuff I've already got and save a little bit of cash. I'll leave a link in the description for all the items I've used to get this Starlink running the way I have, but let's test it out a little bit more. So now if we're parked under a tree, I just plug the Starlink in, throw the cord out the window, and then run the Starlink to a nice clear view of the sky. Okay, I wanna do a really quick comparison and calculation to see the difference in power draw if I use the Starlink with the inverter through the 240 volt plugs or I use it through my 24 volt converter. Okay, so I've turned everything off in the van and I'm only pulling 0.05 amps at the moment. So let's first off just turn the inverter on. Okay, just the inverter turned on by itself with nothing running on it. It pulls about, yeah, 1.05 amps. So that's not insignificant. So now if I plug the Starlink in, off the inverter, I'm getting, so it's pulling about 4.5 amps. And uh, that's on startup. So let's just leave it for a second and see if it settles itself. So it has settled itself and I've opened the app and I'm getting about 25 watts power draw from the Starlink itself. But through my inverter, I'm getting 46 watts or about three and a bit amps. So that is about double when you convert DC to AC and then back to DC again, you lose quite a bit of efficiency. So now let's try with the DC converter. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it on through my DC converter here. Okay, it is now settled and you can see it's drawing about 26 watts on the app and pretty much the same on my monitor. So I'm not losing any efficiency. So this basically means the most efficient way to run your Starlink is through DC. That way you save around about two amps, which is quite a lot over like a 12 hour day if you're running it, it's 24 amps. That isn't a insignificant amount of power to be wasting just by converting electricity. So if you do have a smaller battery bank, definitely use the DC converter rather than running it through an inverter. Remember, everything that I've mentioned in this video, you can find in the description below. If you got anything out of this video, the easiest way to say thanks is just to hit the like button, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you next time.